I'm Frank Trigg, and I'm fighting Jim Wallhead in Bama 7 on Saturday night. Who is Frank Trigg? I don't know. Some guy? Uh, that's a tough question to answer. There's, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm the guy who lives in my own skin every day, so it's tough to answer because I don't, I don't think I'm anybody special. You know, just uh, another guy who gets up every day to trains and comes home every afternoon to do fourth grade and fifth grade homework and cooks dinner every night for his family. That's all. I don't particularly enjoy fights. They go to standings. That's not my forte. My forte is wrestling, even though I do have a lot of finishes by KO or TKO, but if you watch those fights, they're from me grinding them out, putting weight on them, putting pressure on them, punching on the break, punching on the clinch, kicking on the break, you know, elbowing on the clinch. That puts a lot of heat on guys, and that's one of the things that Tim tries to do with me is he tries to get me to constantly be punching, and then Neil works on constantly trying to wrestle. So it's a big game between the two. Uh, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't particularly prefer it to be on the feet. It's just where the fights start. You know, and if I can punch a guy a couple of times before I take him down, it's all the better. You know, it's, it's, it actually softens him up before I hit the ground. So when I do have to hit him, I don't have to do as much work. I do all of his stand-up. I do his boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai. You can call it what you want, but I do all his stand-up fighting. A lot of people uh, want, you know, want to put a name on it, but I've done uh, everything standing up on my feet um, you know, for, for, for about 30 years. So I've been, um, you know, I've been doing it for a while. So everything he does standing up, that's, that, that's what I'm helping him with. Man, he just looks great. You know, it's uh, it's 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 always nice to see somebody uh, go through the waves of training, and then a the week before the fight, everything feel great. And I'm I'm 100% confident as a coach. I see it in his eyes. I see it in his in his movement. He's very confident. His spar has been going great. Um, you know, he's had he's had some good knockouts in this camp, and um, you know, I'm I'm just I, I I couldn't be more happy with him right now. Uh, yeah, I'm in way better shape now. We we because remember we anticipated being a five round. Uh, title fight with with uh, Tom Watson so we had to do a lot more work in the very beginning of camp the first my, my camps used to run eight weeks now they kind of run like 12 weeks so the first six weeks of my camp was we were concentrating only on Tom Watson before they made the opponent change to Jim Wallheed so we actually got I was in really good shape for six weeks out from a, of a fight before we got the opponent change so and then we just kind of kept with that plan but instead of training for five rounds we started training for three rounds that was the only real adjustment Everything else was the same. You know, the Muay Thai practices were the same. The, the wrestling and jiu-jitsu practices were the same. My strength and conditioning practices were the same. What we did is that we shortened the time and upped the intensity because people would think that a title fight, you have more intensity in it, but it's a lot longer. So it's a game of, of, of explosion and rest that you do within five rounds. And a three-rounder, you can just kind of go as hard as you can. So that's what a lot of it was, trying to push you and trying to make you go as hard as you can so we would adjust that, that scale a little bit. But then everything else was the same. So I actually got in better shape because I started in better shape. You know, the first six weeks, I'm really concentrating on a five-rounder for 25 minutes. Then all of a sudden, we get the last six weeks, we're concentrating on a three-rounder. But that first six weeks got me in great shape because we were anticipating that long, the extra two rounds, and we didn't have them. So I'm in a lot better shape than, than even for Bama 6. You might see a little bit more striking, uh, Jim Wallhead. If he stands up, uh, you see, you know, you see a lot of stuff we've been working on. Uh, you didn't get to see too much of that last time uh, with John because uh, it ended pretty fast. They got in the clinch, went on the ground. John uh, uh, is not well versed on the ground, uh, but this guy is well versed on the ground. So you may see a good stand-up fight. Uh, you may see a good ground fight. Uh, you never know. So I, I, I believe you see more striking though. I want the fight to end with Frank's hand being raised. Doesn't matter how it happens, you know. Um, I, I believe uh, I believe Frank is hungry, and Jim Wallhead is a is, is a tough guy. And I think anybody who wants to be tough against Frank, you know, you need to be slick against Frank. If you want to be tough against Frank, it's it's going to be a rough night for you. Um, you know, everyone's asking me like, what's you know, how important is the title? You know, it's not it's, to me. It's just another you know, another belt or another trophy or another plaque that's going to go stuck in my cl in my closet. Like I don't, I have tons and tons of them from all my years of com competing from the time I was basically 12 until now. And I've got tons of awards and tons of stuff. And some of the stuff I'm really proud of and some of the stuff I'm not so proud of. And it just kind of sits in the closet. I'm not one of those guys that says, look at me all the time, you know. Um, so for me, uh, uh, the title or the belt is, is a bonus upon the fight. Because the original fight with Tom Watson was very interesting to me. He's a very big guy. Um, he's, he's probably the biggest 85-pounder I've ever fought. Uh, so he'd be the biggest guy I've ever fought in my whole career. He's very good on his feet. He's very strong. He's very... He's very, um, he, a lot of people look at him and go, he's very one-dimensional, but that's like saying, you know, Chuck Liddell's one-dimensional or, or Randy Couture's one-dimensional. They're one-dimensional because they, they stop you with everything else that they know. Where, where Tom, 
he's going to beat me up on my feet if I can't take him to the ground. And a lot of people are like, well, you can't take him to the ground because he's so good at his takedown defense, which he's working on in Greg Jackson's academy. He's going to be very difficult to take down. He's going to be very hard to beat on his feet. So it's a game of, of cat and mouse and trying to play and pick my space. Um, so a fight against, against Watson is very interesting to me. Getting the belt as part of it is just a bonus. It's not really, I'm not really on the title hunt, per se, as I am interesting fights and fighting guys that, that I respect and like. You know, I know a lot of guys say, oh, you got to hate a guy to fight him, but I'm not like that. I like, you know, those guys I like and I respect in the fight. It's the same thing why I, I had a mini retirement where I, like, I was done with the sport and I sat on the couch for eight months and, and drank two bottles of wine a night and ate a whole chicken every night and just blew up to 2.30. And I get a phone call by T.J. Thompson over in Hawaii. He's like, hey, come fight Jason Miller. And, I, and Jason Miller's a guy I've always respected. And I went and I, and I beat him up. Like, I beat the crap out of him. And it was great because I got to beat a guy that I really wanted to fight that, that I thought was a great competitor, he always brings the game to you, and that's not, kind of the same thing I had with, with Tom Watson. I want to go out there, like, he's a guy that's always going to bring it. He's a nice guy. You know, there's nothing, I have nothing bad to say about him at all. Uh, uh, he's a sweet guy, but, you know, he's, he's young, you know, and, and, and really hasn't been challenged. That was going to be his first big challenge, but he's also was going to challenge me in, this, in his size. Then he switched over and gave me uh, Judo Jimmy Walhead, or Walhead, rather, excuse me, and he's, <clears throat> man, he, he's a totally different guy. He's a totally different opponent, uh, but, but dangerous in his own right. Has great overhand Right power has great hooking power, so it's a, you know, it's that whole game. And and now I heard I heard tell that the winner of this fight is going to challenge for the title against uh, against Tom. Bama seven, September uh, September tenth in Birmingham, England. Frank Trigg will be fighting Jim Wallhead, and um, he will be doing the same thing he did last time, which is um, a devastating fashion. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be making some noise. I hope his buddy Kuba Gooding is there again because I know he likes the fights. And he's going to see uh, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be nice. Tune in, people, because it's going to be live. Frank Trigg will cut you up with the elbows and put you to sleep. And you can think he's nice, but when the bell rings, it's over. Jim Wallhead should expect to see the doctor after the fight. That's what you should expect. I, I was kind of upset the way that I finished Phillips because it wasn't, a, it wasn't a decisive end at Bama 6. It was one of those, I elbowed him, it was a big cut. He could have continued to fight. I mean, he, he, was, he was mentally aware and physically able to continue to fight. The gash was just so big in his forehead that he had to stop it. I, I, don't, I don't like stopping fights that way. I want to have a definitive finish. Knock him out, TKO him, put him in a submission, make him tap, black him all the way out. Like, I want a definitive finish in the fight. Uh, so that was disappointing. Um, but the way, we tr the way we approach training camps now here at Couture's in, in Vegas, now that Randy is retired, and even though he's tremendously busy, I mean, he, he right now just got back from filming his movie Hijack, which will be in theaters, you know, sometime later next year. And, and he came home for three days, or two days, excuse me, and he had to go to New Mexico to film a hunting show, and then he's gonna go, he has to go to Colorado for a day, or up to Oregon for a day to see his, for a couple days to see his son. He's gonna go to uh, uh, Colorado for a couple days to check out one of his houses. I mean, the kid is, he's tremendously busy, but he still has time enough to call me once a week and check on how camp is going, and to go over the game plan. So in between takes on his movie set, he's looking at film of my fight. And because of his retirement, he's able to spend a little bit more time paying attention and helping you game plan. Because of our game plan pace now, it looks easy because we spent so much time and work working on the game plan and sticking to it and believing in the game plan. You know, I said earlier that, that Tim kind of, I'm mindless when I go in there. When, once I step inside the cage and they lock the door and I'm doing mitts with, with Tim and I'm doing rest or jujitsu and, and, and with, with Neil Mellison, it, it, it's, it's mindless for me because I'm doing as I'm told. It's so that I can believe in the training camp. I can believe in the, in the, in, in the, the, the game plan we have set for the fight and stick to it no matter what happens. We, we get a hiccup, you know, you get punched, we, he throws something at us we're not used to seeing, he, he takes us down, um, he's got a submission on us, we battle the submission, we battle the takedown, and we get right back to the game plan. And, and there's, there's always seven layers of the game plan, and, but you can go from layer seven to layer two, layer one to layer three, and just you can jump around, but you gotta know all seven layers, and so when you kinda get through this, the layers, you just keep bouncing back and forth until the fight finishes. With Phillips, I got through layer two and the fight was done, which was kind of upsetting because I had five more layers to get to, but also too, you can't really complain because you only got the layer two, there's five more sets left to go and we still finished early. So that's a nice feeling, but I don't think it's gonna go like that with, with Wallhead. He's a lot tougher opponent. Not, not a lot tougher, uh, excuse me, I, I misspoke. He's not tougher, he's different. He has a different game plan, he has a different set of, set of skills that he brings to the fight. So because of his skill set that he brings to the fight, it's going to be a lot more difficult to finish him as, as quickly as I did with, with Phillips, but that's just because it's my style versus his style. It makes it more difficult. But, you know, if I was, uh, you know, like when you, uh, Phillips and Watson fought many years ago and it went to, went to a decision, you know, but uh, I don't think the Watson fight 
and I are going to go is going to go to a decision. I don't think the Phillips fight and I had, was going to make it to a decision either, and it didn't. It ended up that way. So it's pretty good. But I always like to have a definitive finish to those fights. Like a definite, this fight's done. As opposed to doctor stepped in, I was like, you know, it just it just it just this is not it, it's not as satisfactory as it is to making the guy go to sleep or or or, or making him tell you he quits.